good morning today we are going to see the topic on a phase lock loop it comes under the unit of uh, fourth unit of this uh, linear integrated circuits so far we have discussed the astable multi vibrator and the monostable multi vibrator so coming to the phase lock uh, loop it's an important building block of this linear system so and mainly it's used in the radar communication so in the early 1980s it is developed in the year 1930s so in that condition we this pll will be should be in the discrete form so now we have made this advanced ic technology have made this pll as a monolithic ic's format so this ic is now an inexpensive one earlier it was a very costlier one now it's like a inexpensive ic that we said we already we have defined it's like a monolithic ic so in this phase locked loop we have uh, the main basic principles used is that feedback system in this feedback system we have the phase detector block and the low pass filter the amplifier and the vco so this vco is nothing but a voltage controlled oscillator so coming to this basic building block of this phase locked loop here we have the phase detector so here we are going to apply an input signal so uh, generally i'll be telling this phase detector is nothing but your tax as a comparator so already we have seen uh, the topic on comparator it as a standard signal that we have a reference signal and the input signal so we have the two signals that will be compared that may be either greater one or the lesser one or it may be a equal voltages so in this condition low pass filter we have studied the four types of filters as low pass filter high pass filter band pass and band stop filter so in case of this low pass filter it allows the low frequency signals and it blocks the high frequency components so in this condition the output of this phase detector that is a comparator comes from this uh, out of the signal it will be passed to that low pass filter so it allows only the low pass signals that high pass signals are to be removed so those uh, low pass component signal components are to be amplified and it is passed to that voltage controlled oscillator this voltage controlled oscillator will separately uh, study it as a uh, separate topic in this uh, a controlled voltage is given to that voltage controlled oscillator it produces an output voltage v not this voltage is compared with this your input signal because already i have mentioned that it's a feedback system so i am going to compare that input signal uh, voltage signal with the output voltage and or uh, frequency of that input uh, signal and the output frequency to be compared if it is more diff if we have more difference then some uh, voltages to be controlled to make that v not and vs to be equal so this is the condition in this phase lock loop so as i mentioned that we have a four different blocks the first block is the phase detector the second block is the low pass filter and the third one is an error amplifier circuit and the fourth uh, circuit is the voltage controlled oscillator so here the input signal vs with the frequency fs is applied to that phase detector circuit this phase detector circuit as i mentioned this can be act as a comparator circuit so here i am going to con uh, equate the voltages or the frequency components so here the frequency fs is the input signal and f0 is the output signal this is to be compared so in this phase detector compare or comparator is basically a multiplier which produces both signals are sum and the frequency difference so in this condition the sum frequency we have fs plus f0 frequency to be added whereas in case of this uh, comparator if it is the difference in the signal we can get the expression as the input signal frequency signal as fs and the output uh, frequency as f0 so here 
consider this as your 3 hertz and this as your 2 hertz. 3 plus 2 is nothing but your 5 hertz signal. In the case of the difference in that 3 hertz minus 2 hertz is 1 hertz signal. So, this signal is again to be passed to that low pass filter. So, I have mentioned that this high pass filter frequencies are to be removed. So, in this condition, this 5 hertz frequency is high when compared to this 1 hertz signal. So, in that condition, I am going to remove this 5 hertz signal. So, I am going to entirely block the sum factor fs plus f0 to be removed. So, because this is the high frequency, high, uh, high frequency signal that is to be passed only to the high pass filter. So, this component we are not uh, going to the, the component to be removed from that low pass filter. So, this VE is nothing but your error voltage comes uh, out of the space compare detector or the comparator circuit that was to be passed to that low pass filter. So, in this once we are passing that output of that comparator, we get the different signal to be passed as the output to that um, from that low pass filter that will be strengthened. So, this amplifier as in general we know that amplifier is to strengthen the signal. So, here the Fs minus F0 signals are taken into consideration that is to be passed to the amplifier circuit. So, that amplified circuit is to be given to that voltage controlled oscillator. Here the voltage across uh, the controlled voltage we call it as the VC that is to be applied to that voltage controlled oscillator. Here there will be a shift in the frequency to make the Fs should be equal to F0. So, in that condition we are going to reduce the difference in the frequency input and the output uh, to be reduced from 1 hertz to 0 hertz. So, our ultimate aim to make Fs minus F0 uh, sorry Fs is equal to F0. So, according to that I am going to change my voltage that is to be controlled with the help of this voltage controlled oscillator. So, our voltage controlled oscillator is used to control the voltage which should make my the input signal should be equal to 0 Fs is equal to F0. So, in that condition I am going to discuss with the three categories of uh, range. So, one thing it is like a free running frequencies free running and the other one we call it as the capture range and the third one is the lock in range. So, in that condition once the Fs is equal to F0 that condition we call it as the lock in range and we are going to reduce the frequency from Fs minus F0 from 1 hertz then 0.5 hertz 0.2 hertz like that we are keep on controlling our voltage to reduce the frequency then that condition we call it as the capture range. So, in that condition here we have a capture transient graph. So, in that condition so it is the first of it is like a 0th condition there would not be any clock it is be in the unclocked range. So, when we are starting with the frequency range then you have difference in the frequency will get smaller we have a small sine wave appears in that condition once we keep on increasing that voltage controlled oscillator to make fs is equal to f0 and the, during that condition this will be like a pure dc component the values are to be like we don't have a frequency range so here it will be in a locked range so during that capture range we have a small sine wave appears that too we have uh, uplift of this uh, that is your shifting of your voltage varies with the difference in the frequency a small sine wave appears and it keeps on successively iterations to be done every time to make your fs should be equal to F0 that condition it is like a pure DC line you will be getting F is equal to F0 in that region we call it as a lock in range condition. So, this is the main 
basic building block of this linear system the main concept of this this uh, phase detector again we have will be studying in depth of what is uh, operation behind there in the phase detector circuit low pass filter and the voltage controlled oscillator so this is the general block diagram of the phase locked loop so here vs fs and the error voltage here the controlled voltage here after passing this we will get an output components of voltage and the frequency component so next comes we are going to see in depth of your phase detector then low pass filter and the voltage controlled oscillator so here the amplifier is just to strengthen the signal concept mm. next comes the phase detector though the phase detector or the comparator is consists of two types one is analog phase detector the other one is digital phase detector so in this <coughs> two types one is analog phase detector and the digital phase detector coming to that analog phase detector again we have an input signal vs the same input signal is given consider this as the analog detector circuit so in this phase detector circuit it works like a switch condition whenever the switch is open what will be the condition when the switch is closed what will be the operation working operation so it acts as a switch the output is given to that low pass filter when we drive with the vco voltage so here it's like a comparator we should have a two voltages to be compared or the two frequencies to be compared that's the simple block of the space detector that too we are going to see it in a analog circuit so here it uses a switch type with a phase detector when the switch has two conditions open or close condition based on the signal given from the vco voltage control circuit so the signal given from this according to that my switch will get open or closed so here the input signal is uh, the given is a square wave signal so here the input signal with the error voltage produces an output with a square wave signal so here that this is like a input signal a square wave is therefore chopped as a repetition rate determined by the vco frequencies so in this condition next we are going to derive the output based on your vs signal and the v not signal from the vco so based on this i am going to draw the output signal so in this output signal we have vi vs in the first condition i am going to assume my vs is assumed to be in phase so we all know that the in phase which is nothing but zero degree in that condition vs is in phase with v naught we have studied that uh, resistance um, inductance and capacitance here the capacitance lags behind 90 degree leads behind 90 degree so that time uh, we have to draw plus 90 degree and minus 90 degree conditions the same phase angle detection lag lead concept here the vs is in phase with uh, v naught so here we started with the negative of the square wave so from there we are going to draw a sine waveform so that in that condition when we can make my switches to be closed so in that condition my switch is closed only when my output is at the positive side so i have hatched my outputs to be at the positive side that condition my switch will be in on condition or it may be in a closed condition closed type so similarly in that condition the negative cycle my vco uh, controls the switch will be in a off condition that is your switch will skipped open okay so in that condition we are going to calculate the error voltage too 
So similarly, we are drawing for this 90 degree phase, phase detection and the 180 degree phase detection. So it's the reverse operation of this pi and 180 degree. Here the negative of cycles are to be hatched and for this pi is equal to 90 degree, the error voltage will be 0. So in that condition, we have a positive half cycle off and the negative half cycle. We do not have that error signal voltage and the, in case the, if there is an error in that signal, that signal to be taken as the average value of that output waveform. So here as I mentioned, pi is equal to 90 degree. In that condition, the error voltage will be 0. When in case of pi is equal to 180 degree, in that condition, my error voltage will be in the negative. Whereas pi is equal to 0 degree, this implies my error voltage will be in the positive voltage. So this is similar to the concept of the reference voltage comparator circuit, positive reference and the negative reference. And it may be considering my reference voltage as the zeroth line. That is you are making your reference voltage as zero. We can call it as zero detector. The same concept applied here with the phase angle and comparing that input signal Vs with that output signal. So here the Vs and V0 is in phase with uh, each other. Whereas here it is 90 degree and the 180 degree lacking concepts. And I have made the hatching, that hatching occurs when we are driving our the VCO circuit, it makes the switch to close. So when the switch is closed, that portions are to be hatched with the help of the lines. So in this condition, I am going to do the analysis concept. So as I mentioned, in the analysis concept, the phase detector it uh, basically a multiplier circuit. So multiplier we are going to multiply two signals. So here the input signal we have the, the voltage as Vs and the output signal as V0. So the input signal Vs it can be mentioned as V small as sin 2 pi Fs into T. So this is the condition for input signal Vs, we have a frequency called Fs. So in condition uh, V0, V0 into sin 2 pi F0 t with the phase uh, difference pi. There will be some finite phase difference angle with pi. So in that condition Vs and V0, so this is the output of this phase detector is an error signal. So here the Vs is nothing but the multiplication of two signals Vs into V0. So I can multiply these two signals Vs. So this is your small Vs. Vs sin 2 pi Fst into V0 sin 2 pi F0 t plus pi. And we have some constant called k. So we are included that k signal k into Vs sin 2 pi Fst into V0 sin 2 pi F0 t plus pi. So when we are making that condition here V is equal to. So in the mathematical concept we have studied the formula like sin A plus B is equal to sin A sin cos, cos A sin B plus sin A cos B like that we have some factors called A minus B similarly we can write for cos A plus B and cos A minus B. So the same concept from this we solve uh, right left hand side. So in that condition it is like a multiplication of K into Vs into V0 we are going to write it as cos 2 pi Fst minus 2 pi F0 t minus pi minus cos of 2 pi Fst plus 2 pi F0 t plus pi. So it is like written as cos of A minus B minus cos of A plus B 
divided by 2. So, this is the condition, this is the formula we have studied in the mathematical concept, this is applied. So, I can make it as k into Vs V0 divided by 2 into cos of, again I have to write all those factors, Fst minus 2 pi F0 t minus pi minus cos of 2 pi Fst plus 2 pi F0 t plus pi. Okay. So, I am going to consider when the lock range, I am going to equate my input signal Fs to be equal to the output signal. So, my error voltage V is equal to K into Vs into V0 divided by 2 of cos of, if I make my Fs as F0, F0, F0 gets cancelled. So, cos of minus pi minus cos of here I can make 2 pi fs is equal to f0. So, I can replace this fs by f0. So, I can take it common as 2 pi into, you can make 2 pi into 2 into f0 then plus pi factor. Okay. So, this is your final expression V is equal to k into Vs V0 divided by 2 of cos of minus pi minus of cos 2 pi into 2 pi f naught t plus pi. This is the final expression of that error voltage signal as used in that analysis. So far we have discussed it is an analog phase detector circuit here it is working in this switch concept. We are comparing that input signal and the voltage driven from the VCO that is considered as the output is nothing but an output is the error voltage signal. So, in that condition we have considered phi is uh, 0 degree, phi is 90 degree and the same phi is 180 degree concept is applied and the error voltage for the phi is 0 degree what will be the error voltage or to be calculated. So, coming to the digital phase detector. So, in this, in this digital phase detector, we will be using uh, the basic gate operation. So, in that condition, I have used that XOR operation. So, already we know that the operation of your XOR gate, which is nothing but A B bar plus A bar B. So, here if I give my input as 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 consider 0 a is 0 b bar is 1 0 dot 1 any number multiplied with 0 is 0 then here a bar is 1 sorry a, a is 0 a bar is 1 1 dot 0 so again it's 0 consider for this condition a is 0 b is 1 b bar is 0 next plus a is 0 a bar is 1 plus 1 so we can easily say that if any input is 1 and not like that, different inputs the outputs are 1, same inputs the outputs are 0. So, that is the basic condition of this XR gate operation when we are applying here we have applied the input voltages Vs and it is compared with the output voltage V0 coming to the digital phase detector we are going to take into consideration that input signal as the Fs and the output sorry frequency as that F0 signal. So, when I am out of make my Fs as 0 and F0 as 0 what will be the output that is my DC voltage. So, here I have used the gate operation is like a quad CMOS operation with the number 40. 70. So, the squared operation we are, can represent 1 by 4, 4070. CMOS IC is preferred for this digital phase detector circuit. So, here this concept as mentioned in the truth table, if any input is uh, different inputs like F is 0 and the F0 is 1, the output will be 1. So, that is the condition applied for this digital phase detector. So, here 
my fs signal initially it starts with zero input for a square wave so it started with zero and we have one zero one zero one concept and we have the f naught will have some initially finite phase difference as phi there will be some shifting in that waveform so in that condition we have the phase difference as phi then yeah, again we are applying a square waveform this is the pulse representation now it is zero and the output is zero so in this condition this part alone my out input is 1 in that condition my input is 0 so here 1 and 0 are the different inputs I can get my output as the maximum 1 similarly here it is maximum and here it is maximum so 1 and 1 again it's 0 so particular position here it should be like here it is 0 in that portion it is 1 so 0 1 the output is 1 so it's like for a one time period time period this t it time takes to complete and one cycle it includes both positive and negative cycle so here it takes starting from this part to this part we can consider it as 2 pi 0 to 2 pi that is your time period so this is the output is v dc is nothing but the dc voltage so according to that i am going to draw a curve for this a phase difference phi between the frequency fs and f0 with respect to the dc output voltage so here i have mentioned there will be a finite phase difference phi here the total time period is 0 to 2 pi i have drawn from that pi i have the maximum amplitude with the voltage of vcc is nothing but the saturated voltage and for this half is pi by 2 that pi by 2 is nothing but your vcc by 2 so that is the supply voltage given to that phase uh, locked loop circuit so here that slope we calculate as the slope is equal to the conversion gain k phi so in this concept if i apply my voltage signal vcc is equal to v phi volt in that condition i have to calculate the slope of k pi so in that calls up my vcc is 5 volt and the supply with the phase angle as phi so k pi is nothing but 5 volt divided by pi which is the value of 1.59 volt per radian is the final value of that k pi next is voltage controlled oscillator so this voltage controlled oscillator is again an ic so this ic is developed when the company called signetex so already we have discussed the manufacturers of ic's they have been coming up with a special name and the specific code for each ic's so that op amp I can mention IC, I, op amp is IC741 op amp and that 741 have the variety of different ranges of op amp like 741S, 741ST, 741 for military grade applications like that every ICs have the specific code and the specific name so that uh, name like uh, 555 timer NESC the signetic it is developed by the uh, signetics and the uh, name starts with NE bar SC it's a 566 uh, let's we have discussed with the triple five timer with the help of that we have studied an unstable and the monostable multi vibrators so now we are going to discuss about the 566 timer so we call it as that voltage controlled oscillator circuits so this is the 8 pin IC of this uh, voltage controlled oscillator as usual on that op amp condition we have the supply pin and the plus vcc and the minus vcc is given to seventh pin and the fourth pin the second pin is for the inverting and the third pin and the non-inverting like that we have a voltage controlled oscillator with eight pins the first pin represents the ground second pin is for no connection 
third pin and the fourth pin are the output pins we take by default it is mentioned that the third pin should have a square wave output and the fourth pin by default we should get it as a triangle wave output and the fifth in pin is the modulation input that is we are going to give an controlled voltage as the input signal and the sixth and the seventh pin is connected externally to this voltage controlled oscillator and the supply is VCC. So this is 566. So we know the concept of the capacitor charging and discharging concept occurs. and the resistor it limits the amount of current flow so the rest of the thing we are going to vary that input so here we are going to control our voltage to make that v naught should be equal to vs or fs should be equal to f naught for that we are going to give some inputs that is applied to that fifth pin so earlier what we have seen is the pin diagram of that 566 uh, voltage controlled oscillator so here coming to that uh, this is the block diagram of that voltage controlled oscillator so in that block we have the first ma main important thing is constant current source bar sink constant current source or sink so here we have three uh, amplifiers you just say in terms of a1 a2 a3 this a1 is nothing but your buffer it's like a, your temporary storage signals to be stored here that is to be passed to that amplifier signal a2 that we call it as a schema trigger this schema trigger topic is alone studied in the third unit which produces an output of a square waveform and that square waveform output is passed to that a3 amplifier this is nothing but the inverter so we know the basic uh, uh, logic gates we have the concept called a single input as not gate once you give the input as one it inverts it to the output as zero similarly if i starts with my square wave input is so starting with uh, the value of one once inverting it should start with the value of zero so by default i have mentioned earlier that eighth pin is vcc supply pin is given the third pin produces a square wave output and the fourth pin produces the triangle wave output so here we have studied and the basic concepts of integrator and the differentiator concept the same concepts to be applied the schema trigger uh, the output is taken from uh, from the buffer is given to that fourth pin it acts it produces a triangle waveform so see here this the complete box covers your third pin fourth pin eighth pin here the sixth and seventh this rt and ct it is connected externally from that voltage controlled oscillator as i mentioned that ct capacitor charges and the discharges the operation of your capacitor it's connected externally and the resistance ter terminal to limit the current flow is all and the fifth pin i have mentioned it as a modulation input so this is the input given to that constant current source bar sink so in that concept is a simple concept when uh, my buffer will get worked when the schema trigger output so i will get an output of the buffer as a triangle waveform based on that we have derived the schema trigger output as a square waveform that is to be inverted and given it to the third pin so here the supply pin vcc here the capacitor CT can be charged or discharged based on the current source bar sink.
so this is the main concept and the value of the uh, current flow is limited with the help of the resistor so the vco used is converting the low frequency signal low frequency signal that is mainly applied in egs and ekgs mainly used in the audio amplifiers the concept of this first we applied this we get a buffer signal and the output produces a find uh, fourth pin as the triangle waveform so in that triangle waveform we have the maximum voltage of 0.5 vcc and the minimum voltage of 0.25 vcc based on this the it is given into that uh, inverting terminal the non inverting terminal pin is connected to the resistance rb and ra so in that concept that RA and ZB which is connected to the constant current bus goes. This concept, I have to mention this, we have drawn a output at pin 4 as a triangular waveform with a maximum 0.5 VCC. Once it reaches the 0.5, that is it starts from this point, this point, the schema trigger output starter when it starts from 0 to 0.5 vcc in that condition my schema trigger ct it exits this position my schema trigger will be at the maximum value so here 0 to 0.5 vcc it reaches in that schema trigger it reaches the maximum vcc once it reaches 0.5 vcc it starts discharge the capacitor starts discharging so in that condition my schema trigger will glow, move, goes to low condition so up to this my schema trigger value will go to low condition that value is like 0.5 vcc once it again it starts from this position to this position in that condition again my capacitor starts charging so it starts charging up to this once it reaches that 0.5 vcc that is your ct is exceeds 0.5 vcc then it starts discharging in that condition my schema trigger value goes low 0.5 vcc to this one it again becomes low condition so this is the output of that schema trigger so once this is passed to that inverter it's just an inverse operation wherever that zero comes it will be in the maximum output as one condition so from here to here it is like zero one position now it becomes a zeroth position zero bit so that output of pin 3 it's like maximum vcc once it reaches the 0.5 vcc that maximum vcc the capacitor decreases the same concept it becomes high and there becomes low this is the operation so this is to be derived concept of this is derived and to get a final expression as v naught here that the frequency varies from 0.25 vcc to 0.5 vcc in the triangular waveform so the difference in these two ranges is 0.25 vcc so in that condition the total voltage on the capacitor changes from 0.25 vcc to 0.3 vcc so the difference in the voltage is 0.25 vcc so this is the derivation we are going to derive based on this so again i have drawn the block diagram as the typical pin connections so one pin it's ground pin two pin we don't have connections sixth and seventh pin is connected externally through the resistors rt and the ct fifth pin is the modulation input given and to the capacitor and the eighth pin is given the supply we get the fourth pin with the triangular output third pin with the square wave output so in that condition i am going to derive we know that del v value as 0.25 vcc and we should know the relation between the voltage time and the current and that capacitor voltage 
sorry capacitor time so this is the relation between the voltage and the difference in the time which is given by current by the capacitor value so i know the value of change in the voltage is 0.25 vcc so i can substitute for instead of this del v as 0.25 vcc divided by del t i by ct now i am going to make it to find del t as 0.25 vcc into ct divided by i this is the change in time value okay so once we know the relation between the frequency and the time period now we know the time period so the f not frequency for this uh, triangular wave the frequency of this triangle wave the time period is 2 into del t so once it's like a del t is found out we have to multiply with 2 del t in case of this so i can mention this one as 1 by 2 del t which is given as 1 by 0.25 into 2 as 0.5 vcc ct and the i comes to the numerator so i into i divided by point vcc into ct so coming to that i i value is nothing but i is equal to v by r so this v is nothing but vcc minus vc this is the supply voltage vcc and this is the controlled voltage vc and this is the external resistor used so i am going to supply the current value as vcc minus modulus vc divided by rt so this is to be substituted in that f naught expression so vcc minus vc divided by rt comes under here 0 0.5 vcc ct rt so i can write 1 by 0 0.5 as 2 so 2 vcc minus vc divided by vcc into ct and rt so when there is no modulation when there is no modulation that is we don't have a modulation pin in that condition i am going to consider my vc value as 7 by 8 vcc so i can make my expression f naught is equal to 2 into vcc minus vc is replaced by 7 by 8 vcc divided by vcc into ct into rt so 8 8 minus 7 it's 1 so 2 into vcc vcc into rt ct so this vcc and vcc term gets cancelled so i can write my expression 1 by 4 1 by 4 RT CT F not you can make it as 1 by 4 or RT CT or else 0.25 divided by RT CT once as I mentioned a capacitor value and the resistor value it is connected externally of this your 566 IC we can easily calculate the value of RT and the CT with the help of dividing the value with 0 0.25 we will get the frequency of that voltage controlled oscillator output as F0. So the next basic building blocks of this is the low pass filter. So already we defined the low pass filter it's like it allows the low frequency signals and it rejects the high frequencies and particularly the noise signals are to be removed so the filters are of the it's classified as the passive filter active filter so again the filter concept we have low pass high pass bandpass band stop filter so in that condition the low pass filter we uh, get uh, the input from the phase detector that is an error voltage 
that is the difference of fs minus f0 is to be passed to that low pass filter will get a signal that to be amplified which produces an output of vc that is the signal from the phase detector we get an output voltage as ve as an error voltage that is to be passed to that low pass filter will amplify the output this is the low pass filter it removes the high frequency components and the main thing it controls the dynamic characteristics of this pll dynamic characteristics of pll so already we have discussed what is the R, uh, passive filter and the active filter so the passive filter it has uh, designed with the help of the passive components like resistors inductors and the capacitors so in this uh, concept of the filters we have used the one more resistors here the r and c are used in the r here r1 and c are to be used the same out input is given from the phase detector the output is passed to that amplifier so this is like a, both r and c components are used this is nothing but your passive filters are to be used so in that condition the comes the, the active filter so we have discussed this operational amplifier this ic everything comes under the active components so in that condition the active filter here the input from the phase detector it is given to that inverting terminal the non inverting terminal to be grounded it is passed to that operational amplifier and it is used with the rnc components to directly connects to that output to vco so in that condition here the capture range as i mentioned the capture range the frequency response we will calculate the frequency response so the bandwidth and the transient can be characteristics of these things can be drawn transient responses can be drawn once the bandwidth gets reduced and the response time which increases in that concept of the active filter the bandwidth filter gets uh, bandwidth is nothing but the difference in the upper and the lower cutoff frequencies the response time will be higher so in case we are reducing the bandwidth again the capture range also gets decreased so as i mentioned the capture range is that we are going to make we should make our fs frequency to be equated to f0 so for making that equation fs is equal to f0 we have to control our voltage so that condition will apply a small uh, sine wave appears and later it moves to the dc component this is the capture range so once that bandwidth gets reduced ultimately the capture range also gets reduced so this is the very important topic of the phase lo locked loop the main major role that is the main concept of this is the voltage controlled oscillator